So in this video, I'm going to be restoring this 1964 Sears Custom 600. It's in pretty rough shape. The front grill is kind of, you know, messed up. It's got a good, you know, chunk missing out of it there. It's broken on the side here and uh, right down here where it mounts is broken as well. And of course, the hood's got some holes drilled in it. So that's not going to be perfect either. But it is what it is. I mean, those shouldn't be too bad when it's done hopefully uh shift was broken off the transmission i'm the one that actually broke that off and then of course steering wheels messed up so i'm going to put a different steering wheel on it i'm going to put a six speed or a high and low range uh roper uh, transmission in here and instead of the three speed that's in here so of course i'm going to have to put a hole inside of the frame here for the high and low range lever and then the two holes in the frame here to actually hold the lever in place and then of course there's the hitch plate uh, for the transmission uh, because they don't use the same hitch plate. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get this mostly tore apart and we're going to come back and give you an update on it. So of course I finished uh, taking it apart and now I'm going to, you know, clean everything up here a little bit more and put it all on these pallets and of course start wear wheeling everything and probably cut these four uh, little screws out because uh, those never want to come out. Got to cut the two nuts off underneath the seat pan there and I have to do some metal repair right here just to keep that little crack there from getting worse and then of course I gotta find it here there it is uh, I gotta build a new clutch setup because this one originally attached to the side of the engine and then someone made it work uh, by making a bracket for it but it will not fit with the engine I'm gonna put in here so I'm gonna make a metal bracket welded to up here that's gonna come down and it's gonna pivot. I'm gonna see, I did this a couple years ago. I'll just show you it right now. Um, like this one. Like this is one I did a few years ago. It's just an L-shaped bracket and then a piece of metal I cut out with the plasma cutter and the clutch just pivots. Just like wood on like an SS16 or ST16, any of those newer ones where it's on the battery tray. So it's been a few days now. Uh, everything at this point is ready for paint. The only thing I'm not 100% happy with is this front grill. I couldn't figure out a way to fix this without making it look worse than it already is. So I, at least for now, I'm going to just leave it. I could always make a little something and then paint it red uh, to fill that in. Uh, of course, I'm going to put the silver mesh behind this and I'm just hoping that it'll just blend in. And you won't really notice that that little inch piece there is missing. I did uh, modify this rear frame to fit the 633A transmission so it's got the hole in the side for the high and low range lever. I had to cut this a little bit higher because of where the shifter is. I didn't drill the two holes on mount that little shift plate, however I can do that later on. And I took this piece of metal that I cut off here and then welded that in place there and then kind of made that smooth as good as I can. And then, of course, for this engine I'm going to use to fit, Predator 212, you do have to cut the battery tray if you want to use the gas tank on the 212. If you want to use the original tractor gas tank, you can just take the gas tank off the engine and then, you know, leave this attached and just put the gas tank on here, like that original one over there. So, of course, cut that off. And then made a new clutch a long time ago, actually. So this is the Suburban style uh, clutch piece, but I copied it and made my own. And then this bracket here is the mostly off of the original clutch on this custom, which the other part is right here. It, this one's just a little bit too big that it won't fit with the engine there, uh, being that everything is moved further back than what it was factory. Like I think the, the crankshaft on the engine is gonna be probably about right here compared to originally right here. So that'll make a difference on how far away the clutch has to be. But I'm going to uh, shut this camera off, get everything painted. So everything is now painted, well besides the hood I guess. So I got the frame here ready to put together. This I can't put together on my forklift just because of the way the front frame is shaped. Normally I set everything on the forklift and I put it together up there. I got a coat of paint on this custom lettering, which I probably have to do another coat on there. I brush painted it on. So you can see a little bit, it needs to be redone a little bit there, not too bad. Everything's got a nice thick layer of clear coat, especially the seat. 
And then of course the hood has to get wire wheeled and everything yet. Transmission, uh, that'll be uh, fun to put in. Hopefully it actually fits in there uh, that I actually torch the holes in the right spot for uh, the high and low and everything. But I'm gonna get some of this put together and come back and give you an update on it. So I was just getting ready to put the transmission in and this little shift fork for the high and low range is actually broken. And you can see that next to this one here isn't broken. You can see uh, what went wrong there. Uh, turns out, because I've taken these apart many other times, that uh, you can just unscrew these. So you just take it out, unscrew it, and then slide it back in, screw it into place. So I got the transmission in and the fenders bolted on. It was very, very simple. Nothing really different than normal. Of course, my high and low shifter actually lines up perfectly. I just measured off uh, one of these tractors that came with one of these transmissions in them. So, of course... I did uh, cut out the plasma cutter, this front like two inches or so, and then I welded that in back here. I wish I would have got some more metal and then added another two inches on there, because right now you're going to be able to see this ugly little bracket, which I'll probably paint that red or black or something just so it doesn't look as bad as it does. Maybe black so it kind of blends in with the rest of the hole. So all the way forward it just, you know, misses the frame. And uh, that should work fine. It actually wouldn't hurt to uh, pull the shifter out because that should be able to come up through this hole and then uh, bend it up slightly. Um, but otherwise, that's whatever. It's fine. And then I do still got to put the little cotter pin in for the high and low range lever. Uh, but that seems to be okay. Uh, these two holes here lined up perfectly with the hitch plate uh, for the 633A and the hitch plate holes that was on this tractor. And the cool thing is these holes are slotted. So that made it even easier. Uh, fenders, of course, bolted right on to their original spot. So, I mean, really all you got to modify is the two shifter spots. Otherwise, it fits right in there. Steering column is just sitting in there. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, stick the back hubs on there, lift the back up with the back tires on, and then uh, front spindles and front tires. So, kind of a rolling chassis now. Of course, got the fender seat on. Our back tires are just sitting on there because uh, I got to pull them off and paint them. And then uh, working on mounting the engine. This is a little like six and a half horse 196 cc. It's off of a pressure washer. Um, so thought I'd show you before mounting that that I drilled some quarter inch holes and tapped them so they're threaded. So you don't have to try to reach underneath the frame. These frames have quite the support underneath. And of course I did a bad job painting under here but uh there's a whole bunch of stuff underneath that's really hard to get your hands under there. And I've done this before where you just thread the bolt into the frame and that's been three four years ago and that's been holding. So I'm going to do the same thing, just thread the bolts in. The front grill's broken, I probably showed it before, so down there it's busted. So I drilled a couple holes, a couple holes on the frame there, and it's just going to bolt like that. And then for the side here, what the plan is, is I'm going to just notch this out with the grinder, so I'm going to... Let's set this here and show you a little bit more. Going to draw a line straight up. Draw a line straight up from about right here and then just cut that off. Uh, so then that way these two parts where it's broken isn't a problem anymore. And then that'll give a little bit more room for the air filter box, which isn't really going to be in the way anyway. So, but I'm going to get that engine mounted, front grill put on, come back and show you what I do. From so a couple days later here, I got a couple more things done. So I did get that grill piece cut I was talking about so it doesn't look like it's broken anymore. I'm going to paint that little edge there red so that blends in. Of course there's some mesh in the front grill now. Of course you can still see that broken piece I was showing you before but I'm still thinking that you know when the tractor's all done you won't really notice it. Of course it does need something done with the front axle because it's bent right there. And I didn't realize that until after I took it apart. But I did the hood and the dash painted. It turned out okay. It's definitely not perfect. But uh, it is kind of what it is, I guess. The dash has some red that shines through. It turns out this dash is actually supposed to be red. As I was uh, wire wheeling it, I seen some red paint underneath. And I looked it up and it's supposed to be red. But I'm okay with it being white because otherwise this, there would be... Probably just too much red on this tractor with all of that. So I'm fine having dash and hood white. I also painted the hood and grill for the 71 uh, SS12 I did 
about two months ago, so that's done now. Put that back on. So I'm gonna get that dash hood on and everything finalized, and then you guys get to see the final result. So we are outside because it is finally done. I am very happy actually on how it turned out. So the only kind of, you know, thing I'm not real happy with is how the shifter turned out just because I cut it with a plasma cutter. The hood isn't perfect. You know, it's got these holes and a bit of waviness to it. It's got a 3D printed uh, hood ornament that was actually printed in black filament. And I painted it silver because I didn't have any silver filament. The uh, decals I made, so they're not perfect. They're pretty much just uh, printed on a piece of paper, laminated, and just taped on. They look kind of terrible, but it is what it is, because uh, I couldn't find these anywhere and they don't exist. Uh, that one just looks a little cheesy. The rest of these seem okay. This one here is for SS14, uh, the earlier style. Painted the uh, shifter knobs blue to match my custom six simplicity steering wheel. S stands for Sears now. And then uh, the tie rod, um, or I guess the front axle is still bent. What I actually did is I bent the tie rod slightly uh, to do the alignment properly, I guess. And then of course the front grill is broke, but I guess it's, oh well. It does run and drive. So I'm gonna start it up. It's actually really fast because there's a larger pulley on the engine it has a four inch pulley on the engine compared to a three uh, it's actually really fast so this is second gear high range at idle the brakes kind of suck but they do work i'm gonna go into high gear still at idle this is probably like six miles an hour still at idle <laughs> 